this is uh okay. really this is really with uh with uh tom and dave yo there you go really people like and subscribe us yeah uh, yeah point your pointer at the youtube make a comment at uh really with tom and dave yeah uh, on youtube and on the instagrams and all all places where podcasts are listened to we are there and we would love your support and uh comments and all of that um yeah it's super great and it's been great to see those that have commented and in, enjoyed our george knapp series and yeah that, which was cool right? yeah I, super get cool. That, I i was even impressed by that and i'm not impressed by us I, I know. I, that yeah, was, I didn't think there was much yeah. yes, impressive at all about us, but there we were with yeah. the man. Acting and, uh, impressive. That was that was some cool, cool shit. How are you doing, bud? I'm good. It's it's becoming wintry here in uh, New York City. Have you heard of it? Um, I had, yeah, it's East Coast City. Yeah, it's like I think it's thirty. It's thirty two degrees right now uh, outside my window. Um, mm. Considerably warmer inside my window. Uh, very holiday. I like that. I like that mm -hmm. kind of. It's feeling very thing. crisp. It's feeling very crisp out there now. Yeah. I'm, I'm Do you have a fireplace of any kind? Do you have a uh, source? Not of an form? official fireplace. Uh, a radiator. It is New York. Have, you have a radiator. I have a cardboard box that I set on fire. Okay. All right. Yeah. Something to just you know. Yeah. And I have I have radiant heat as you do in New York. Mm -hmm. Um, it, with, with that comes with with its ghostly bangings and poppings and clicking. Okay. I was going to ask. The makes a lot of noise. Me. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a nice year. Um, good. Good to see you. And you, everything's good in, uh, California. Everything's good. Yeah. A little stressed. Like there's, it's yeah. kind of deadline. Some lots of, you know, people wanting their shit, you know, yep. Yep. Well, yesterday. Then. And I'm like, I'm working on it. I'm getting there. And yeah, I got, yeah. you know, I got to talk with Dave too. That's important. Yeah. Can't... We should go on strike again. It was nice and relaxing. It was just so like, yeah, it was, there was nothing, uh, yeah, there was nothing to do. That was great. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. but yeah, so, uh, but other than that, it, it's good. Things are good. I'm looking All forward right. to the holiday Yeah, and I'm looking forward to today's conversation. Yes. Uh, because you know, cause, um, you know, the non-human intelligences, they don't take the holidays off. So, no, they don't. So, I, they, so we, so we don't either. They stay at it and we're, as, and we're after them and we, as we the, as the human semi-intelligences that we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, who's our guest today, Tom? Let me tell you what's who's going on guest? today. We uh, we have Greg Hunter is a yes. filmmaker, musician, co-host of the podcast Deadly Diocese, and producer and editor of the podcast Seven Deadly Sinners. After spending a decade in Los Angeles, Hunter and his wife moved on to their 70-acre ranch in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. Sounds very cool. Um, an award-winning documentary filmmaker with a lifelong passion for being curious. He has always been a pursuer of the unknown, a true adventurer. He's with us today uh, to talk podcasts, but also about a very unique experience that he had that is uh, UAP related. So um, without further ado, let's bring Greg to the conversation. Greg, there he well, is. Guys. Hey, there he is. thanks for having me. How are you Turning doing? Like a fine-tuned oh, machine here. Colorado looks beautiful. Uh, it's great. So it looks, it's, mm. I, it sounds, I mean, the ranch, what, the, how, how, how did this happen? Yeah. That sounds fantastic. Well, it, it's, it is fantastic. I'm glad I lived in California for a decade, Tom, you know, been there, been to New York plenty, love both places, but cost of living is a little, little steep there. Mm -hmm. And, um, I actually had bought this land, um, in 2017, the drummer of my old band moved out here and he was doing, uh, experience experiments with hemp seeds. And so we started a company uh, in 2019 after uh, they federally approved uh, hemp to be grown in the US again. And we were doing that for a few years, the pandemic kind of smashed that but the pandemic gave me the opportunity to convince my wife that it'd be a lot better out on the ranch than being stuck inside where we've got guys in LA outside of our apartment, you know, causing trouble. The police mm -hmm. are outside the door. This was, yeah, we're paying all no kinds fun. of money to be stuck inside or we go outside no. and deal with the protest. So I was like, I got all this land and we That's, don't even have to pay rent. It does sound nice. And yeah, I know. It sounds, it sounds lovely. Yeah. Uh, what, and is it like rolling? Is it near mountains? Is it woods? Is it farmland? So, I've got a thousand feet of elevation change on our property. Oh, wow. So it starts off, you know, it's the, the great plains. You can look out east and see like a hundred miles. You can see the Comanche grasslands. There's oh, wow. nothing out east. And, you know, and then I'm right where like the Cretaceous piece of slate 
that starts the rock, he starts to jut up out of the earth. Wow. And so behind me is a backdrop of two of the youngest volcanoes in North America, uh, the Spanish peaks. And they've got, they, you know, they exploded in whatever, however many millions of years ago, but there's these giant volcanic dikes that kind of run all along out of my property, which is pretty cool. They look like very cool the spines of dead dinosaurs or dragons or something. Yeah. Out wow. in the it sounds plains. beautiful. It sounds magical. I it know. Is, you know, I mean, yeah. Sounds and like wild, wildlife. Do you have wildlife? Tons. I woke up to this morning, let my dog out to pee. There was 50 pronghorn 10 feet from my house. I mean, I had to like make sure he didn't run after him. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah. lots of antelope, um, mule deer. This year, I was, I've been here, like I said, since 2017. So, for the last five years or so, I probably saw two bears. This mm-hmm. year, I saw five different bears. They were here the entire month of October. Well, the bears can't afford California either. Yeah, they're like, fuck this. Exactly. Yeah, they're moving yeah. out. Yeah. So, <laughs> what kind of bears? My... You got to be black careful bears. of bears. Black bears. Only black bears. Yeah, yeah, we don't have any grizzlies as far south as I am. Um, but, I mean, they're still menacing. When you see 400 pounds of black fur and muscle and fat just yeah. moving yeah. at 30 miles an hour, you're... that's what blew me away was seeing how fast they move. Yeah. Like, and they're not, they're not looking, you know. Black bears, they see you. They're like, I'm out of here. I ain't dealing with this. If I'm with my dog, if I'm in my truck, they're just gone. But like at the speed at which they take off, because I chased one down one day, one morning in my truck, it was just running along the road. So I was like, I'm curious where he's going. <laughs> Let's just, test his speed. I mean, yeah, he was flying. I was going 25 and he was just you yeah, know, they're moving super fast. way faster than me. Yeah. So, but that yeah, lots crazy. of wildlife and sometimes extraterrestrial life. sometimes weirdness right yeah. so let me yeah. let me just preface for a second we had so we are we have a friend in common a friend of our podcast friend in in general avery siegel who was mm-hmm. uh helping us here with um with really and and i and works with morbid that i think you guys were doing with your podcasts um this is uh so she, she sends us this e- email because we and i've known avery since she was in like circle room preschool because our families are really good friends and our our kids our kids Mm -hmm. grew up to you know um my kids grew up with avery and so it was just really like funny and wonderful and great that she was able to be involved with uh with this for a minute but yeah we were trying to freak her out with uf uap stuff and and then she was like well my friend greg and this Mm -hmm. you don't always get this i guess you do get these emails now that we have this podcast because normally it's not like (laughs) my friend greg had this like thing happened on his property or adjacent property and it like a, a cattle mutilation. And I, I mean, of course we were like, yeah, hell yeah. Let's hear like, about we that. Wanna, yeah. We want to talk to him about that. Um, and, uh, but we also, you know, want to talk about your, your work and all that, but let's, let's find out what, what prompted, what, what happened? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. so the day that I decided, I was like, finally, I'm getting to the bottom of this. I had, so Love Avery. Oops. Avery, yeah. uh, we were on the Morbid Podcast Network, and she is like yes. the assistant to the heads of that, and like you know is yes. a godsend and, and helps we us tell all. People that you guys, you, I, I started listening to your to the uh, Deadly Diocese oh, podcast, yeah. uh, which, really cool. which is really Thank interesting. You. <laughs> it's, yeah. I don't want spoilers, but I'm going to want to ask some questions. But but, but it's know, and, for sure. And, and you had before that done Seven Deadly Sins was was a podcast that your your wife started. Uh, Correct. Uh, well, we started it together. So yeah. me and my wife actually met. This is a whole nother story by me being her podcast editor before Seven oh, Deadly Sinners. She yeah. had a comedy podcast. She's a comedian um, and knew you, Dave, uh, for that reason. Oh. Um, anyhow, she was like, Dave Foley, you're, you're talking to him. And I'm like, well, you're the- making me feel all worried <laughs> and pressured now. Now I see you. I'm like, I recognize your Better face. Better be nervous. Yeah. 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 Anyhow, regardless. Um, yeah, during the pandemic, we started Seven Deadly Sinners, um, yeah. and she takes down cult leaders and televangelists who are just selling snake oil and bullshit. So, yeah, um, so polit- you're dealing with religious corruption, correct? Which That's is kind of our very interesting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, but, let's let, let's hear that, what's your cattle and the then cattle mutilation. Hear, yeah, yes. I want to hear all about that. You're, so you're, you're on a ranch. Yes, and, and I've been you hearing have, about is it. Is it your cattle? Do you have your own cattle? It's not my cattle. It's not my cattle. Yeah. How this did you is, hear about it? Well, from my neighbor. Okay. From mm. both of my neighbors on either side. 
So, mm-hmm. I mean, we live in a really small community. The The town is 400 people. We recently got a gas station in a Nace Hardware, and like we oh. think we're New York City now. Like this is, yeah. you know, crazy. Anyhow, um, within like two days, my neighbor to the south told me that like, oh, you know, he had a picture on his cell phone. This guy is like, he's a Yaki Indian. He's got a flip phone. The, the picture was all, you know, really, I'm like, I don't know if this is, you know, who? And he's like, yeah, this was on um, Jim Healy's property. I don't know if I should say his name. That's, Jim. Up to you. That's between you and Jim. He yeah, wouldn't, he wouldn't know what a podcast, I mean, this guy, he's got one pair of overalls and a billion acres. I mean, he's richer yeah. than he knows all in dirt. <laughs> Okay. really great guy like anyhow would never lie yeah. um anyways he was doing some excavating for my neighbor to the north and told him about it too and then my tile guy the guy who was doing the tile work for the container home that my wife and I are building comes over and the it actually happened on his property they were Jim's cattle uh-huh but it was my tile guy Dana's property that the cattle were on um, and so, cause they rotate fields and whatever, whatever. And anyhow. when is this, by the way, what time um, is this of year? Is it recent? This is recent. Oh, this is, this is like, let's see, would have been, I think the actual cattle mutilation happened two months ago in September. Okay. So and mm-hmm. still summary. Yes, it was still warm, still warm for sure. I didn't finally, I, I was curious enough that I had to interview everybody involved. So I went and, you know, got the mics out and was like, okay, we're telling these stories, you know, for, on the record. Cause like yeah, there's no yeah. one out here. It, it did have an article in like the Trinidad Gazette, which is the the smallest little city close to us, 11,000 person town. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, but yeah, so I hear about a cattle mutilation mm-hmm. from two of my neighbors on both sides of me. And then the guy doing my tile and it happened on his property. And so the story goes um, from my tile guy, who I think is the most credible source. That's true of all tile guys. Yeah, I've exactly. always found them to be, you know, yeah. yes. in, in the world Reasonable of home repair, people. most of them you can't trust, but a tile guy, you can, yeah. you can take this guy. Day. He, this guy is like the bread and butter. He only does mm. tile. He's really yeah. competent. He could do a lot of other handyman things, but he's like, I like tile and I only do tile. <laughs> Yeah. And like I, I'm trying to get him to build my fireplace. He's like, no, that's brick. Like he just does tile. Anyhow, yeah. great guy. He calls himself a dreadneck because he's got like dreads on half of his head. And the other side is like kind of like shaved down. He lives in a yurt in the middle of nowhere. He's just this, you know, shaman-esque type of guy. Anyhow, um, Jim comes over to his property, his neighbor, and is like, hey, can you fix my suspenders my overalls i can't reach them <laughs> and he was like yeah of course he's like but that's not why i'm here <laughs> he traveled a thousand mm-hmm. acres <laughs> and he was like i'm here because he was dana was gone that weekend and when he came home he saw that someone had opened his gate and there's tire tracks leading all the way out to the middle of his pasture mm-hmm. and um he was like well, that's kind of weird anyhow like he wasn't home for more than 20 minutes before jim shows up Anyhow, telling him like, hey, there's something really weird that happened out on your property. And I took the cow away because I didn't want you to have to deal with it. I know you don't have any heavy machinery to lift this thing up or anything. So like I'm the one who unlocked your gate, you know, and and came and got my cow that was killed. Mm -hmm. And he had the vet come out and look at it. And there, one, the rest of the herd is completely on the other side of the pasture at the farthest point they could possibly be on the fenced in 35 acres that were there away from this dead the hell away from that okay and all bunched up you know i'm not a cattle man or a cowboy but i was told from them that it's pretty strange for them to be all like clearly uh, you know afraid or you know aware of something else going on where they were all, they're not, they're not spread out. They're all hurled up in some area. Like they were rounded up there. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, this cow had its tongue removed um, from the base with surgical precision. It's a 14 inch tongue all the way down removed. There's no other blood on the ground. 
and I've got photos of this. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no other blood on the ground. There's no blood on the skin of the cow. Um, the tongue mm-hmm. is just seemingly gone. Gone. And no, like, no and even blood around the muzzle or anything? No blood around no. the muzzle. Wow. No, no, like, f- you know, no claw marks, no footprints anywhere leading in or out mm-hmm. from the cow. And no, no other signs of trauma to the cow? Was no, there was the then, then a very strange. And what's wild about this is, as I'm sure you guys have heard from your research and encountered in other podcasts and uh, you AP UFO happenings, uh, things of that sort with other cattle mutilations, they remove like a circular piece of skin. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard of that and like, I can't believe this is, you know, what I'm being told is happening, not even 10 miles from my house. And 10 miles here is, I mean, like that's next door. Right. There's three neighbors between me and this ranch, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah, so there was a circular piece of skin. Do um, you know how large was that? Yeah, I could send you guys a picture too. Like it was probably twelve inches ish in oh, diameter. Inch. Oh, so large, a large, large. Piece. It's like yeah. on the shoulder area, like yeah, ear ish of the cow, I guess. Um, and it didn't look like it's not a perfect circle, but the cow could also have moved. Like it's, it's definitely got some very like circular cut edges and it's just the, you know, the hide, the hide is removed. Yeah. And there's no burn, no cut marks. I mean, it looks too, it looks like someone came in with a razor blade and just tried yeah. to draw a circle, you and know, no, and, and no blood at that side. No as well. blood, no blood on, on the, the hide, no blood on the ground. This cow is just laying there dead with no footprints, no claw yeah. marks, no blood on the grass, no blood on the hide. Um, complete mystery. Yeah, to, and, you know. and neither of those like injuries seem like they would explain the cow being dead either. I mean, and that is actually true. Yeah, I mean, like it could survive without bleeding out. There would yeah. be signs of trauma. Um, yeah. You know, like the the tongue could be removed and with the surgical precision that it was, it wouldn't kill the cow. And certainly yeah. this hide section of hide being removed, like yeah, it wouldn't kill the cow. So it wouldn't entertain the cow, but yeah, it probably wouldn't kill it. Yeah. <laughs> um but and, no, it wouldn't and be fun for the cow. Did did the uh was the cow taken to a vet or anything? Did well, they had the vet the come cow? out. They had yeah. they had the vet um you know, these are that's local easier mountain than, that's folk. easier than taking the cow in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And ranchers, you know, like um yeah. Jim came and got it with his tractor, chained it up by all four hooves and, and took it and buried it on his property after the vet looked at it. The vet yeah. was like, This is a supernatural phenomenon. I have I I mean, this wasn't an animal who killed it. Um Yeah. And nor did the vet think that that tongue could be removed by a human at the point that it was without further incisions. Well, yeah, because it's deep inside the the, the yeah. tongue. If you said it was t- taken like at the root of the tongue, fourteen at, inches, at the, fourteen <laughs> inches down at the base of, yeah. of the cow's tongue. Um, that's far inside the the skull of the cow. Yeah, you're like cutting into the throat or opening up the mouth and cutting the cheeks further yeah, down. Have- if you're yeah, you have to like, really get the cow to cooperate. If you, to, yes, yeah. yeah, say ah. Was yeah. your neighbor? This was his. Oh. The, the person that found it was was it the was owner him. of the cow. Correct, but they weren't the cattle at the time. weren't on his property. On his neighbor's property, the they were on were the there. neighboring property. He's got yeah. a deal worked out, and that guy, the neighboring property which the cow was found on, happened to be my tile guy. Yeah, who, um. So they so it was he, gone at the time that it happened. Yeah. So do, was the was the cow was it uh, to use the proper term exsanguinated? I don't know what that <laughs> proper term all, means. All of its it's blood different. removed. Was all of the cow's blood removed? Dave stumped us. Uh, he did. Or, um, I believe I can't I can't attest to say that all of it was removed, but yeah. it, it would have had to have had significant amount removed. Well, that's so fact that there there's no have blood been. around that. That's exactly this yeah. is and, you got to think like you always hear about these stories. At least I have, you know, Texas ranches. And I'm like, there's no way this like I know these people like I know how they operate. Like Jim's like, 
well, this is pretty str- I'm surprised he called the vet before he buried it. Like he was like, I got to get this off of Dana's property. Yeah. He doesn't have a tractor to move it. This thing's going to start rotting and smelling. And then, but, and then at least he was conscious enough to be like, well, this is quite strange. I, I at least got to call the vet in. So we, there was a vet report, but, um, did the I, vet have a, have a theory about cause of death? Uh, she was spooked probably a heart attack i mean could have been um i didn't see the official vet report i just i talked to both dana and jim and got their firsthand accounts uh, of it you know like i said i'm knowing these guys i'm surprised they called the vet beyond that it's like this is all filtered out through word of mouth we don't have a paper we're we're in a 400 person town that is actually in the largest by square footage county in Colorado. We're way spread out. There's just, you know, and so like, I'm glad they called the bit. Like I said, the story made the Trinidad paper. um, But like, there's just not a lot of coverage. Was the first, is this the first event of its kind in In this area area that anybody knows about? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Now it's the first one. Jim's neighbor not Dana, the another guy has kind of a skinwalker esque story and a Polaroid photograph that like when I asked Dana about it, he told me that he he like froze up and this was on I recorded it. it he was just like, it, dude, it's still burned in my mind. Like I cannot get that image out of my head. There's a lot of cr- weird things, but there has been other cattle mutilations on ranches right around us. And mm-hmm. like we're right. I, I'm only 30 miles from the New Mexican border. Um, The panhandle of Oklahoma pops right out. Like, so Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, there's been lots of these reportings, this exact thing, you know, and I'm, I listen to, you know, supernatural paranormal podcasts all the time. And I hear about something it's uh, Skinwalker ranch, for instance, is also like, you know, a six hour drive for me, not too far. Yeah. So we're out in this Navajo country, middle of nowhere type of place. Um, and I've heard about lots of similar things. I, I can account for at least one more cattle mutilation within our county in, in Colorado within the past like five years. Yeah. But I've also heard about very similar, like tongue removed, piece of hide removed in Texas. It's only maybe 200 miles away from me. Um, and these are just like things I've watched on Netflix, other podcasts yeah. I've encountered. I'm like, and all of this, I mean, I remember hearing about a cattle mutilation on a ranch in Texas a couple of years ago around the pandemic and being like, wow, like it's so close to us. And yeah. then hearing about this one and it's like, it's the exact same yeah. thing. It, it seems like it's staged. It's like, this can't be real. Like I'm so into this stuff. I'm wondering if it's one of my buddies just screwing with me, but like, no, yeah. like I've, you know, it, yeah. that would be an extreme, extreme <laughs> prank to your buddies. You know? where they're, yeah, where they're, I, yeah, I don't want a buddy. Gonna, that's gonna, yeah. They're going to kill a cow. Jim's just, cow. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody exsanguinates my bulldog. And so I'd be like, fuck you, man. That's, and, yeah. That is not funny. Well, well, cause also cause a cat, cause a cow, um, yeah. City folk might forget, um, is a really expensive piece of property. Like a cow. Oh, yeah. Like if, like you kill somebody's cow, you you damage the cow. That's that is that's a that's a felony offense. That's a absolutely. felony crime. You they know, got titles because it's worth thousands I of didn't. dollars. Yeah, a- absolutely. It's people's livelihoods. Plus, there's yeah. no way that my neighbors could pull that off and not spill a bunch of blood somewhere. So I know it wasn't them. Yeah. It, it was too precise. Well, but yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. you know, I didn't realize got, I'm no rancher. Yeah, nor am I. But I, I used to live in sheep country, and some of them had okay. cows. Some of my friends had had cattle, uh, mostly sheep. Um, but yeah, they're cows. They're big. They're expensive. And uh, but also, um, you can't do that like, to a cow. It's not no, nice. and I, like I used to know the stats on this, uh, but I've forgotten it now. But like since like Linda Moulton Howe started covering the cattle mutilation story back in I guess the eighties. I mean, there have been literally tens of thousands of incidents <laughs> of cattle mutilations, and interestingly, not one arrest. Not even mm. one suspect in all that time. Would, and again, for these are felony crimes, felon, you know, yeah. and, and that throughout, you know, decades, uh, there hasn't been one single arrest. That's that in and of itself. That's is pretty bizarre. Thing. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's like even, if, even if you 
if you want to go, oh, cattle mutilations, that's all crazy. Uh, but you would see footprints in and out of these places too. And yeah. like, I know the ranchers around here, like if it was someone who did that, they would track them down. They would be showing up their front door with a shotgun. Cause there's, you know, yeah. out, out where I'm at, like you yeah. call the police, they'll say like, well, if there's a dead body, we'll come pick them up tomorrow. Like it's too far. Yeah. You know, yeah. Has there... people take thing, matters into their own hands out here and yeah. Yeah. And were there, were there any like associated sort of other uh, events around the That's time? That's what I was going to ask. Is this, have you, anybody like seen any anything? anything? Uh, oh, certainly. Um, yeah. Now, I can't say that they are related events, but I can say that in the years that I've lived on this property full time since the pandemic, um, there's not a lot of light pollution out here. I mean, I am literally, there's not a gas station yeah. within besides the one in our, our local little town, which shuts its lights off uh, and closes at 8 PM, um, you know, for 20 miles, there's no real yeah. city for 20 miles. And that's only North and South of us out East. There's nothing for hundreds of miles. So the light pollution is very low. Except for all those ugly stars in the sky. Yeah, well, yes, they, exactly. They, they clutter up the place. So now I got this whole like Milky Way thing showing up, yeah. you know, just yeah, like looking through that blue and green. No, it's yeah. it's phenomenal. And when uh, when there's a full moon, it's so bright it casts a shadow out here. Yeah, like it's yeah. it's something to behold and to be seen and really cool. And yeah, I mean, I see things almost every night that I can't explain. Really, it could be military drones, but like there's definitely things that move in a way that's like, wow, that's. There, are, there any, are there any military bases near you? There are. There's a ton. I mean, yeah. in Colorado, there's Fort Carson. There's another huge military base just east of me. Um, they pretty much surround me. There's NORAD, you know, burrowed mm -hmm. into the mountain just about 100 miles north of me. But there's definitely been some things that I have seen that have been so mine. And I filmed them and got it recorded. So it's like I, oh. I can relive this. I mean... It's easy to see Starlink out here. Very easy. Yeah, you can see right. the space station any night. Like those things like, whoa, what is that? And we often I'll get my neighbor calling me like, go look outside. I'm like, that's Starlink. Mm -hmm. But um, April of 2021, I saw an array of lights with a friend of mine um, light up above um, the ridge line that we have to the west of us. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell exactly, you know, it seemed like it was only a couple hundred feet above this ridge line and the lights, they all like the, the array of lights like came on, like it's like poof, 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 all in a line, turning on like a football stadium's lights, kind of like they like mm -hmm. popped on and they kind of got brighter in this like straight line that seemed like maybe there was some curvature to it um outward in a sense kind of like the millennium falcons light projector you know what also is its propulsion system but like how that beam of light is but they were circular and they got really bright and it started like it was either moving or stretching out mm -hmm. and then it vanished yeah um i filmed half of this on my cell phone and I mean, this is at night on an iPhone. It was bright enough to like, I didn't need, I'm even zoomed in. It's like, poof, you can clearly see it. So they were bright lights. Cause you know, you know, faint stuff. You can't see stars on yeah. an iPhone at night. Um, and it was a solid light, not a flickering light or solid when it came, yeah. when they like turned on, it got solid, only more bright before it just like vanished. And it was, like I said, it was like a growing, it was like multiple, this array of lights started just all turning on until there was like maybe 24 or so of these kind of circular things. Wow. And what, what color was the light? Um, I mean, it's like bright white, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, I would say if you're getting into the Kelvin scale scale for you filmmakers, like it's a bluer light. Mm -hmm. Um, it would have been like 5,000 K or more. Um, yeah. and yeah, then it just like vanished. Yeah. Um, are you guys and, freaked out at all by this being <laughs> seeing shit every I night? Mean, I mean, are you? I was at that. I mean, I was blown away. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I mean, I'm glad that I filmed it. I watched it a million times. I'm like, should we 
we ended up a, a that buddy of mine is friends with um scott walter if you know who that is he had a show on the history channel that was like america unearthed okay mm -hmm. anyhow he had some connections to some people in government doing uap research and we sent it to them mm -hmm. and they're like definitely uap like definitely not starlink never heard anything more than that um yeah and you know i've just lived with like i have I mean, I've seen, I've, I've had a lot of like alien UFO kind of sightings in my whole life, but this was the clearest one. Yeah. That's like, and not only did I moving, film it before moving to Colorado. Yeah. I saw some stuff back in Indiana where I grew up. Yeah. Um, and, um, had so a were you into too. it as a, were you into it as a kid or were you, did you have an experience that sort of got you into it or what was your mm. first experience? The first experience I can really remember of seeing anything in the sky was being up in northern in Indiana um, at a pond with my buddies up there. I was I was in a band with a guy who his family moved uh, northward towards like Notre Dame, South Bend area. Anyway, we're in the middle of nowhere and their buddies all go to this pond and hang out. And um, I was relieving myself into the pond and. Um, and looking up at the sky with my other buddy and we're just like, Whoa, look at that. Like that, that looks like a star, but now it's like moving. Now it's stopping. Now it's moving again. Like, are you seeing this? You know, it wasn't anything crazy. It was only about as bright as a star. It just like was moving mm -hmm. in a way that's like, that's not a, and it's not a satellite either. Like it's stopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that was the first thing that I clearly remember and saw it with someone else so we could hold each other accountable. I ended up living with this guy for a number of years, even after he moved to L.A. with me and was my roommate. Um, and so we would bring it up um, from time to time. I saw another thing just driving between Colorado and Los Angeles um, on the 10, on the 10 freeway, just like on something mm -hmm. on the 10. I swear to God, I'm just looking like, again. It, it was like something, it was like a drone. It could have been military drone. There's like right yeah. out there were like the 10, 15, uh, exchanges, um, by the Cajon pass. Um, I know there's military bases out that way, but like mm -hmm. there were street lights. Um, and I just saw this thing. I mean, it looked like a transformer. It just like came up and I saw it for like the glimmer as it pulled up through like the street light. It was, so it was low to the ground. Yeah. And then it, it like it seemingly opened up and then like went even higher and then I lost sight of it. But I was like, I did not imagine that. I, I saw so that was a, a machine that unfolded in some way that you uh, saw. Yeah. 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 And, and it was landed and then rose up. Yeah. I don't know if it was it, landed. I mean, like, do you guys know the Cajon Pass? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it to go to Vegas. To... It's that huge yeah. Yeah. drive up. Yeah. So yeah. like it was around there. There's a lot of like elevation change in the first place, but that's all street lit. They got their street lights on the, um, mm -hmm. the freeway coming down. And like, I saw it through that. I mean, I got enough of a glimpse of it. I, if it wasn't landed, it was hovering. Yes. You know, at, at some yeah. point in those crazy mountains, like it had to have been maybe just 15, 20 feet from the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. I'm and so back back in Colorado, so the the lights that you saw over the the ridge, mm -hmm. and you said they and they uh, and you you said you've you've had other sightings out there as well, right? Def, I mean, nearly nightly, like I'm saying, like really? there are wow. there are some things that are just like, how is that? What is that light moving in that that way? There's lots of um, stars that seem to just change colors. And you know, mm -hmm. I got a really clear, like I, you know, picture um, of this stuff out here, and it's just like that. Why is that like radiating a color change? Um, and in other times, it's just like yeah, things that kind of seem like drones. They behave like drones. I fly drones for film purposes all the time. It, it seems like it's moving like that. And there's military yeah. bases I hear. Like I said, it could be. I don't know it, but it's military technology. But like, there are definitely lights on a weekly basis out here um, that you see moving in the sky in, in ways that aren't satellites mm -hmm. um, and they're not planes. And yeah. um, beyond that, like, I don't know. I did want to say about the military base, like UAP 
go around military bases all the time. You know, like it's sort of a dual thing. Like, yes, you, it could yeah, be their technology, but also crap. it's, it's a source of great curiosity, um, that, uh, you know, that, um, you know, that could be, that could it's be a very good point. One of the largest military bases by size, not by personnel is due east from my property directly due east. I mean, if you draw, you, there's no, you can't drive a straight line cause there's nothing there, mm -hmm. no roads, but like, um, I forget the name of the base. Um, it's like pinion or I think it's named after one of the tree types out here, but mm -hmm. anyhow, um, it's enormous. It's in two different States in Kansas and Colorado. Um, and it's just massive. And so like, you know, it would make sense that there could be, you know, either personnel alien or military. Yeah. Poking well, around. Is that, um, I don't know if you, have you seen the, there's the, the companion series to Skinwalker ranch, the, uh, beyond Skinwalker ranch series I, it's, I it's haven't really, it's, seen it it's, yet it's quite good but it, but one of the things they're showing they're they're sort of exploring is the fact that there's that the uh the stuff that goes on a skinwalker ranch doesn't just go on a skinwalker ranch there seems to be numerous hot spots for this kind of activity all across the u.s and I, i'm i'm thinking this is a great field trip candidate dave i mean i think greg's mm -hmm. ranch does it what what do you have a name for we'd, your ranch <laughs> we'd right love to down. have you well i mean the ranch itself is called Rugby Ranch. Our little mm -hmm. section, we just call Hunter's Ranch. All right, that's um, a little scarier. Let's, yeah. Yeah, well, let's but, go with Hunter. Uh, it's your name and it's... Exactly. Kind of Hunter's Ranch. We've, it, got, you know? we've got plenty of acreage and plenty of places to put you up. We'd love to have you. No, no man. Wife, so, if you just, don't mind staying yeah. in container homes, that's what no, 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 uh, no. my wife and I are that's building out here. As long as it has beautiful tile work. Oh, that's I, you know it does. Yeah, yeah that's all that matters. Um. The speaking of Skinwalker, though, I mean, it two things occurred to me. One is, and I'm an avid watcher of Skinwalker Ranch, very curious, and you know, we hope to visit someday or at least send Dave because there's a lot of radiation there. And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little more it's intermittent radiation. Yeah, I'm a little more yeah, leery can, myself. Yeah. Outlast that stuff. But mm -hmm. when they have those cattle events, what's interesting is the behavior of the other cattle. And even before they had and, the show, and, yes, and they you said had the thing about where you're what happened with you guys exactly that was what honestly apparently kind of like alerted jim to what why why are they all why are all the, what are the cattle doing this is this behavior is very uh illogical and irrational and there's no predator there's why are they all huddled up at the farthest uh you know i think it would would have been northeast point of this uh pasture which has no grass to graze no water it's like would have been oh, they just colder. got freaked the fuck out it they clearly like. got mm. freaked the f so then yeah. he comes on and then finds this cow and does what an old 80 some year old rancher does and just like well this is strange i better get it out of here before it starts smelling yeah. but no, you know trying. luckily he called the vet you know because it's possible yeah. like he could have just buried this and told tales about it and he wouldn't even talk about it for very long he just mm, moves on with his day and yeah. he, but he acknowledged it was weird and not some, you know, very specific, oh, yeah. a wolf had, with very specific yeah. taste. He, I and, mean, um, he, the fact that he brought he it up to both of my neighbors is yeah. like pretty strange in of itself. It had yeah. to have shocked him. And he had, he, uh, he had never lost any other cattle in, in that way. No, he had not. No, this was something but, that but other people a, apart, near have. Yeah. Apart from like this Polaroid photograph that, um, Dana, his neighbor, and I'm sure Jim has seen or at least heard about from their other neighbor of of this skinwalker type. Like, I was going to get to this. What the hell's in the Polaroid? What is <laughs> what's in? The I Polaroid? haven't seen it. I want to see it. The best it could be described to me is like what a you know a skinwalker kills something and then can be this creature like it puts on a cloak. Like the leftover parts of it or something mm -hmm. is what's in the photograph. Um, yeah, it, to, it, uh, Dana said it looked like a corpse that had been turned inside out, but that wasn't any sort of animal that he could ever, you know, define. And it looked almost more human like than anything else. But it definitely, I mean, he was his, he was like, he went right back to it. Like, this was, was on his own. He saw no, this and took a picture of it. He did not, he saw the Polaroid from his neighbor. So they'll, you know, there's mm. 
these three guys um, apparently are living in the most paranormal hotspot, I, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and they're yeah. just, um, you know, mm-hmm. a couple miles into the mountains from me. So like, I'm at a point where like you, I've got a County road that's paved leading to my driveway. Um, it's still in the middle of nowhere, but you know, I'm not like just dirt roads driving straight into no, the mountain to the point where when I mean, it snows, you're it's stuck there. Until it melts. Yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. The gas station and the paved road. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, this is practically the big city. Yeah. Um, it sounds cr- I, I the and, thing about Skinwalker that I find, you know, because you, you can watch the show and of course be like, oh, like, oh, like whatever they're dead. I mean, the craziest shit happened long before there was a show. You know, the craziest stuff having to do with cattle happened to this poor family that was just, you know, kind of doing what you and your wife were doing. They just had a they were starting a cattle business. They had purchased some land. They had been sort of working in other industries and um, just thought that they had their life set up the way they wanted to until insane things started to happen with their cattle. And that was that gave birth to all kinds of research and that was going on and that Harry Reid fought to get funding for and was part of the, you know, uh, OSAP study and the whole thing. So, I mean, it's. Yeah. And, and it's again, definitely, cat, cattle mutilation is one of those things that people like to, to trot out as a way to dismiss everything as though, you know, like, you know, ugh, those people are into cattle mutilation, you know, and not, not understanding that that, that isn't a dismissal because cattle mutilation is real <laughs> and it's been going on it for a long no time. It makes no sense. I mean, it makes yeah. no sense to me yeah. at all. I and don't it understand it, yeah. why they it have to keep taking this shit. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, like, and no one's, no one's managed to explain it so far. And, don't they yeah. have enough cow tongues at this point? Like, I don't, yeah. what are they? I mean, is it a delicacy? I don't. It I'm thinking it's a delicacy. Any, they're it's, coming you know, down here. They're like, ooh, we need cow they tongues also, tonight. They also often like to take the anus and genitalia. Um, that's a common thing with cattle mutilation, that all the, the anus and genitalia will be removed, again, surgically, um, with, uh, you know, smooth, smooth edges to the, to the uh, and no blood anywhere. Um, you know, so that's, yeah, they seem to, you know, it's the whole, the whole phenomena of catamulation is weird and hard to figure out. But then again, everything about, you know, a UAP is, uh, you know, it's hard to ascribe any kind of human motivation to any of the things that happen because they are, yeah. you know, well, they aren't yeah. human. Um, no, not no. Hard to even describe once served like us an, tongue that didn't go over well. Sorry, Greg, go ahead. Animal motivation too. Like that's the thing. Yeah. It's like. Tongues removed. Ooh, could be a fox. Could be maybe a mountain lion. Well, not only would you see, you know, other form signs of distress of them, the that animal using its claws and teeth to rip that tongue out. Those animals would take a tongue, but they wouldn't just carve it, a little. They go no, for the guts. Bit of the like the, or, uh, torn to shreds. Yeah, yeah, they, they like, like the soft you know, guts of these things. They like to or, just sort of yeah, start or, eating. Or if you've ever seen like uh, like feral dog attacks out in farms too, you know it's yeah it's it's bloody and messy and shredding like even wolves and coyotes. It's a it's a messy death. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What very was that ter- like, really that, really messy? You know? A terrible fact about bears, which is they just start eating. They don't even kill you. Like you know, lions <laughs> will kill you and yeah. then eat you. Ooh. Bears just well, start eating. You know, and well, bears got stuff to do. Chewing. They got yeah. stuff to do. They can't They'll wait get, around you for know, you to die. They don't care if you're alive yeah. or dead. They're just yeah. hungry. So it's, yeah, it's this, it is, um, it is so strange. I don't know, yeah, what to make of it, except you're living in yeah. a, you've got your own sort of yeah, thing death, going death on there. In the, death in the wild is never clean. It's never, uh, yeah. yeah, you know. Well said. It's like fur is left and hooves and just the, you know, mm. just the yeah. stuff they spit back out. Um. And so you guys are living with sort of regular phenomenon, but this seems like an escalation or did it just like, yeah, this is par for the course or does it seem like, no, I mean, it was, it was like next level for, like I said, I, I went and interviewed these guys, yeah, my tile guy and and the guy who was doing excavation for my neighbor. I'm like, Jim, I got to talk to you, you know, Yeah, can you tell, 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 can you tell us a little bit about how those interviews went and you know, like what, what was their feeling? Yeah. I mean, they were definitely like, they're honest men, you know? So mm-hmm. now there's a microphone in the front, front of their face that they were all the more defensive of like, I'm telling you, Greg, do you know how long a cow's tongue is? Like, do you think like, it, 
this I'm not making this up. This is the real deal. Like here, look at this photo. You know, they were all like this this is this is real. They couldn't believe it either, but like they're not going out telling, you know, fairy tales. And they weren't they're also guarded. They're not like trying to reach the news. They're not trying to be interviewed about this. They're skeptical that I'm putting a microphone in their front of it. Like where is this going, yeah. Greg? Yeah. You, you know, I know you got your podcast. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. But there, um, there are people who said, you know what? I'm going to go get a ranch in Colorado because I want to be famous. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, not, not, not the case with them. They, they were born there and they're just still here figuring it out. Dane is a different case. The tile guy, he was just trying to, I think, leave society mm -hmm. and somehow mm -hmm. just he'll do tile work on the side. But um, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, have they I seen was, and 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 is it sort of a regular like just a known thing like yeah you'll see stuff in the sky are they curious about that do they yeah, see stuff or is it too, or? i thought both of them because i asked them both the same question that they would be like yes i have seen something both of them were i mean and they've lived out here longer than i had nothing why wow. they're just like nope haven't really seen anything up there don't don't look up you know they just they aren't curious about it i think the way that i am i mean i spend great lengths of time just staring at the sky out here at night yeah. um playing music you know it's it's half it's, yeah. it's part of the reason i'm here in a weird way um well and you've had other experiences and it, it seems to be common that people who have an experience have more than one yeah mm. I, i'll say this like i didn't think my wife was ever going to be into like cryptids and bigfoot and the supernatural but she is so into it now that we've been out here she's super into bigfoot la over the past yeah. year her grandfather who is oh, technically it's her step grandfather but this man it couldn't be more just straight lace he doesn't drink never has he's built over 300 homes in his life with his bare hands mm -hmm. um has three alien abduction stories really and this guy doesn't lie this guy i mean like wow. he doesn't want to tell him he yeah. doesn't, you know, he's not like, I just know he's telling the truth. And they, I mean, I've, he's told him to us multiple times. A lot of his family's made him feel uh, like, you know, a little bit ostracized about it. Not, not his yeah. immediate family because they experienced it with him. Oh, um, his, uh, from his, his children from his first marriage. Um, yeah. And they're all like, a, I think still a little spooked. I think he actually made out the best. Yeah. And where, where did where, where did he have his experiences? All of them happened up in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Wow. Two of them while he was driving, one when he went into uh, the master bedroom of his home that he built himself. Yeah. And is anyone, I mean, you mentioned cryptids. I mean, has anyone had any sort of cryptid encounters in your area? Um, there's a lot of Bigfoot talk. Yeah. Um, when you go to a place called um, Chukara, which is like into the mountains, you know, like I'm at 7,000 feet. You go up to Chukara, you're at 10,000. You know, you're in the big trees. Um, it's not hard to get a Bigfoot conversation started up there. I have heard yeah. things on some of the Bigfoot podcasts I listen to. Uh, we listen to, uh, what is it called? Um, Sasquatch Chronicles. And mm -hmm. there's been stories that people have told on there um, that are from Chukara. They're ranchers up there. Yeah. Um, so like, it, you know, you drive into the mountains, you ask a lumberjack, like he'll be able to tell you, point, uh, point you to the guy maybe who's like, yeah, you know, Mike believes in him. He's got him on his ranch. You know, they, yeah. It's not like everyone believes, but like you go yeah. to Chukara too, it's kind of touristy. Um, you can't go there during the winter because there's so much snow, but like they got Bigfoot sculptures out of trees and you know yeah. they're selling bigfoot teas and stuff um but there's definitely real people with real stories out that way that will tell you now we haven't had anything like that where i'm at um beyond the story like i told you about that polaroid uh, on the, the same yeah. guy who had that yeah. cattle mutilation um his neighbors got a polaroid of something that you know burnt a image into his mind he can't get out who said that it's a corpse that's pulled inside out i don't know um yeah well, i think i think we're seeing not not only is bigfoot having like a, a revival i mean I, I you know bigfoot used to be like the one of the doors i close right like when dave and i talk about phenomenon and uap like we each have sort of have these like 
oh, well, I, I think there's something there, but that's bullshit. Or this, I think that, and all that stuff, like when the doors open, it just, you can't, you can't close it. I was terrified of Bigfoot as a kid. Like, oh my God, that in search of with Leonard Nimoy, where the fucking Bigfoot shows up at the cabin. And I mean, it just haunted me. And my grandfather lived out. Well, it wasn't quite as nearly as remote, but in Pennsylvania, you know, he had several acres of just yard that was just dark and big plate glass window. And I was always terrified of it. But the, the thing that's interesting about Bigfoot, you know, we were talking to George Knapp uh, about a month ago. Um, and, uh, and for the pod, and he was talking about the way Skinwalker is this sort of, it's just a place where it all hangs out, like all the phenomena, like, you know, the ghost, mm -hmm. you know, you've got ghosts, yeah. you've got mm. Skinwalker, you've got Poltergeist, UAP, cold feeling, like it's a place where just all the phenomenon gathers. And that is what increasingly seems so baffling, yet somehow... I don't know if log logical is not the right word, but it 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 feels like just tentacles of the same thing, right? Like expressions, yeah. expressions of something that make it. I mean, insane as it is for me to say, you know, like more like I don't find, you know, I mean, is Skinwalker is the Skinwalker is that Bigfoot is that is the Bigfoot some other, you know, variation? Um, I, I don't. I mean, I can't rule anything out at this point yeah. because is it, it's, is it a manipulation from some we're other in weird is ass it, times? Know? We're in weird ass times, and it's like, yeah. and, and Congress is p passing UAP legislation as we speak, potentially. So yeah. it's not just us. We're not just you know, kind of like, oh, isn't Bigfoot cool? Like people are Skinwalker. They've seen it, and there sounds like there's not much. Um, sounds like you could very much have your own. Um, where you're living, I hope less f freakish and less intrusive. I certainly, you know, wish you and your wife peace. Yeah. There <laughs> your yes, yeah. yes, have indeed. You got, I was going to ask the other thing. Have you guys had, in, is that you or any of your neighbors, any kind of poltergeist kind of activity? You know, no one has mentioned anything yeah. like that. But I mean, like living out here so hard, you know, you got random things that always happen in the middle of the night and you got to get up and go outside and it's freezing cold. The wind's blowing 30 miles an hour right in your face and that sometimes can feel like a poltergeist, but like, mm -hmm. um, or just a poor decision you made. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, you know, being alone, you, you're talking about your, your uncle's big yard, just being in nothingness, that quiet when, when you're, when it's pitch black and the moon's not out and like you can hear whispers over a hundred yards. Cause it's just like that quiet, especially if there's a light snow that had just fallen, Man, and you'll get into some, you'll swear you see things. I mean, mm -hmm. there are times, and I'll admit it, as a 35-year-old man, I run to my truck when I'm coming out of my studio to come back down to our house. Um, and like, I will look behind me in my truck bed just to be like, I know there's nothing there. And I'm spooked because I'm the only man mm. for 100 acres in any mm. direction. And it's just so dark and quiet. And like, I mean, I, I've seen, I swear I've seen an Indian chief looking at me a hundred times in the corner of my eyes and it's just a tree. Yeah. You know, so yeah. like there's that spookiness that they get you that comes out here. And with Bigfoot, one thing that like, cause you, I, I ask all the people out here and like, I've got, you know, my neighbors to the South own 60,000 acres and they do mountain lion hunts for a living. And like, you talk to people like that and like, you ever seen Bigfoot? You ever seen Bigfoot tracks? And <laughs> and the thing with hunters is always like, if it was terrestrial, they won't, didn't, you know, I think really well-spoken, open-minded hunters who spend all the time in the woods, just like my wife's father, who's uh, a lumberjack by trade and, hmm. and an avid hunter. He's like literally in the woods 80% of his life. Um, it's, it's a thing where they're like it. It, this isn't terrestrial. Uh, Bigfoot is not breeding on this planet, shitting on this planet, eating on this planet, right. dinning right. on this planet. But if right. it exists, it's coming from, it's either, you know, coming from outer space, coming from another dimension, you know, mm -hmm. it's interdimensional. Um, or it's a thing, you know, you like go Joseph Campbell and it's like, it's it, the great mythology that's within that like when your consciousness, your subconsciousness is stirred in that certain way. There's some people who see skinwalkers. There's some people who see Bigfoot. There's some people who have this, um, 
reaction yeah. to fear that paints things in their reality in the way that their you know the the great myths of their lineage have been told and it's whatever folklore you know yeah. comes to consciousness at that moment um well, that, idea like, that, that our, our collective consciousness can actually project into the material world in ways is and i certainly believe that i i just I mean, you know, I think that if you're, I've seen, you know, I, I remember the first time I had a jump scare thing on the internet. I was a college freshman and you're watching one of those videos. It's like, look closer, look closer. And all of a sudden, like a witch pops out at you at the screen. And like the moment that that happened to me the first time, like me and my freshman year potluck roommate hugged each other, fell back in our chair. I swear that thing came out of the computer screen and it was in the room. We had to run out, you know, it was there, mm -hmm. could have sworn mm -hmm. it. So like, you know, parts of me think that a lot can be painted from your subconscious into reality. Yes. But like, I also think that like there are parts of reality we don't understand in an in interdimensional realm that are also poking out at us that are really there in their energy. And one to some person, it might look like a Bigfoot and it might be able to pick up a log and throw it at your campfire. But mm -hmm. like if you were raised in the Navajo tradition, this could be a skinwalker. Like there's mm -hmm. evil energy, there's good energy, there's just energy we don't know how to explain. And I think that it is poking out at us, like we poke out at it. And, yeah. You know, how it looks through you know, everyone's eyes is to be interpreted differently. Yeah. Yeah, that we bring our our cultural expectations to things. And well, yeah, I mean, we we know from um our, you know, modern brain science uh and you know mr you know fmri scans of the brain that um that whenever we look at anything um uh, only 50 percent of the of the activity in the brain is in the visual centers of the brain the rest is all in the memory centers so most of what we think we're looking at at any given moment is actually built of past images built of you know of every time you look at a chair you're actually looking at every chair you ever looked at before. It's, yeah. you're, you're looking at your memory of chairs because your brain takes a shortcut. So, so obviously there's, there's um, a part of the way we perceive the world is individual because it's built up of our individual memories. So yeah, there's going to be variations. You know, we were at a, we were at a talk with Travis Taylor, who's the Skinwalker Ranch uh, sort of lead scientist and now seems to be just neck deep in all of this stuff with Jay Stratton and working at aerospace on reverse engineering something. Anyway, he I know he was talking about the same thing, Dave. He was talking about uh, as some of the really, really bizarre phenomenon that people reported seeing at Skinwalker you know, could correlate to that. The, the brain didn't have anything in its memory banks to equate it to and just started piling images on top of images to try to make sense of something that was before them that might not have any, you know, reference in our world, um, or, you know, that our, that our brains could think from, which were, you know, ridiculous images. I think there was some like, a, like a wolf smoking a cigarette. Like they were talking about some crazy shit. The skinwalkers at the Pentagon book is, um, uh, this yeah. series of books that James Lukatsky and Colm Kelleher and George Knapp wrote, uh, which are all about these uh, secret UAP programs that the government was funding and and all the stuff they found there. And it's just, it's, it's very wild stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah and uh, are, 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 we're seeing things like something, you know, look like a, a dire wolf that, you know, it's been extinct for a hundred thousand years, you know, again, you know, six foot tall at the shoulder wolf. And, and then of course these, the seven foot tall uh, bipedal wolves that we're seeing yeah. and that seem to be following people to back home with them, you know, showing up in, uh, you know, yeah, the hitchhiker, hitchhiker phenomena. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 yeah, there's some, you guys heard about down. the Navajo Rangers. Um, uh, well, yeah, they they're, they were sort of the, I think they've they actually done a, I think a buddy of mine is doing a, it did, did a sort of series kind of about them. What's it called? Um, dark skies or something i think so yeah i mean are they mm -hmm. are they around you or what because there was i've seen Not some stories far. i mean done like on... ship rock um and that that uh highway in new mexico that was changed from 666 to now it's like 481 mm -hmm. um because people are just like were going there and, you know maybe it was related maybe it wasn't but i know i've i've me and my wife have looked into the stories in the book um that 
these two Navajo Rangers wrote about their experience, just, you know, reporting on, uh, paranormal activity on the Navajo, uh, reservations, um, which is not too far from where we're at. Uh, it, I see. it's crazy. The amount of cr- stories that involve, um, dogs or dog, like creatures, wolf, like running at speeds, like as fast as a car up mm-hmm. and down this I particular I, highway. I- there's a good unsolved mysteries about these guys for sure. Cause I think I saw that and I, and there, there is yes, like yes. Skinwalker and, and big Those guys and, and people having these. Yeah. Re- sort of regular encounters with these things. Um, yeah. It's- the, the one time me and my wife went there, it, we, we were going there for our own podcast to drive up to ship rock. And right before we were, it was weird right before we got on the actual road off of I 40, we were like, let's stop and get a snack. And that became a fiasco. Like we Taco Bell, we sat in their drive through for 30 minutes. No one like they took our order and then just wouldn't come to the window. And we're like, okay, we'll just back up out of this. We'll go to Starbucks. And then that was like a whole thing. And then we got so frustrated with each other. It was just really weird. We get on finally onto the road and we're so mad at each other. And they say that this, you know, area just kind of takes control of your emotions. And we see this pack of stray dogs, these feral dogs, a bunch of them running on the road. And like, this is fucking weird. That's weird. And then we turn a corner and there's a huge wreck. Like a semi just smashed into the side of a mountain oh, right off mm-hmm. the road. And it was just like, whoa. We didn't see anything else after that. But it was like right when we got on all this negative energy and then we saw a pack wow. of stray dogs um they didn't run at the speed of our car or anything but it was just like mm-hmm. weird like feral dogs like a pack of them they look mean they're yeah. mangy there's five of them and they're just trotting upside the road and then we turn this corner and there's a semi just smashed inside and it had just happened like there wasn't yeah. emergency personnel there yet we're like should we call Ugh, should we turn around yeah. i don't know if we're qualified you know feral dogs feral dogs mm-hmm. i'm sure like the dogs will take care of it the, yeah. Dog, yeah, the dogs may have taken care of it <laughs> yeah there's some place where the membrane is thin, you know, it's just, there's some yeah. places where the membrane is thin. I, you know, I think I grew up in a, when I grew up, spent two years in a house like that, you know, as a child. And I think that, uh, you know, the, that idea just has taken on so much more, I don't know, credibility with everything, um, that we're, you know, we're hearing now of just places that just might, you know, they just might have, uh, a kind of closer access to yeah to and, uh yeah. teeming universe of life that we just yeah. might not be able to see or experience yet except in in these ways that make no yeah. sense to us and well gary nolan at stanford has done some research that he thinks he's narrowing in on a part of the brain that may be particularly enlarged in some people who have more paranormal experiences people who have like clairvoyance or uh uh witness things like like ufos or cryptids and you know or just or you know or have religious experiences that this i forget what it's called the caudate patamen or something i forget what it is i'll but take it's your a word small, it. but it's a small part of the brain uh that that might that he thinks is linked to uh higher levels of intuition and that it seems to run in families uh and oddly enough it seems to run like uh in married couples, couples that form, they tend to both, a lot of the times, both have this elevated uh, little uh, activity in their brain, in this section of the brain. Uh, so, you know, he thinks there's, you know, that people are, you know, are drawn to each other that have these abilities. So, and, and uh, yeah, and it's obviously that people have, who have experiences tend to have more than one experience. Um, you know, sometimes a variety of different kinds of weird experiences, but yeah. at least see multiple, like the fact that you've seen multiple sort of, uh, UAP. My and, wife's had a very serious ghost experience that she, yeah, and it's related. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird. Uh, we, both of this has come out more in our lives. Me and Rachel, since we, we were just married, like, let's see, two years ago. So, but like suddenly find ourselves like. We, we just want to do a cryptid podcast. We're just, we just want to be investigating these things. Like it just like, it's yeah, really, it's funny you mentioned that because it's like, she comes more from like, she's had kind of some in her childhood. There was like a ghost train thing. She had an experience in London of like a ghost moving her bed, moving her mattress. Mm-hmm. And I myself have had no real ghost experiences, had a radio turn on when I was a kid that was inexplicable. 
Um, but beyond that, nothing really like that. But since we've been married, there's been weird things and we've just been way more curious about things and it's seemingly bringing it out of, out of both of us more. Like yeah. we literally listen to Bigfoot podcast to fall asleep every night, like bar none. <laughs> That's just what we it's listen nice, to. It's nice you can share it. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, is. It is. I wonder if I can get Christina to listen to because I have to watch like murder stuff and it <laughs> yeah. really fucking bums me out. Like I got, yeah. you know, and she goes yeah. to sleep sleeping like a baby and I'm just getting murdered. I'm just this was murdered. our ease. This was our compromise because I'm, I'm right with you, Tom. Like my wife loves murder. I'm like, this puts me in a bad mm. mood, a bad I, place. I, 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 I yeah. can never fall asleep to this. Yeah. Me either. I, I can't. Serial get, killers. And why? And it seems to be a very broadly true that women love murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, getting, I'm suspicious yeah. myself. And I you just like, got to get like her on like people. being murdered by a Bigfoot. So the, yeah. that's now the, the that's fear where I live. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. So that was our middle ground was Bigfoot. Yeah. So and, do you think uh, you get, will you do you think you guys will branch out? I, I know the Catholic Church would be happy if you guys would get into. The, <laughs> yeah, I want to hear your. Thing. You've got a lot of you've got a lot of sort of balls in the air here. You got these cool, you know, you got deadly diocese, uh, which is really mm -hmm. cool. I'm in the middle of. Uh, you've got seven deadly sinners, which is, which is a, uh, you know, you were you're describing sort of cults and. And what what would be your description of that for our listeners if they're yeah seven deadly sinners has just taken down con men of all sorts mm -hmm. whatever the con is most of the time it involves a religion or involves the second coming and the con man himself is calling himself Christ or you know the enlightened one in every scenario um, we've we touched on people there's this woman in Texas who's like I'm a uh, vermilion lizard lord and i've i've got all my spaceships and like i'm just here in a human body you know there's mm -hmm. and the people listen to them it's crazy um as they empty their bank accounts out and you know just take yeah. people you know uh it's, it's wild but um mm -hmm. if if you like taking down con men cult leaders televangelists who have no business you know speaking um about religion or giving you spiritual advice uh seven dead listeners is a great listen if you're in yeah. more of a like i want a concrete singular story about one murder mm -hmm. uh deadly diocese is about a catholic priest who was probably murdered um for releasing uh details that he probably shouldn't have known about certain um crimes within the diocese mm -hmm. um it's a it's a very uh kind of mobster um undercover story um as we were told through our research by a former seminarian um who's now a truck driver that uh if you th the catholic church makes the mob look like kindergartners is what he told us and in, uh in, yeah i believe him i mean in they're being able to close ranks and protect its own and yeah no, yeah yeah well i mean mm -hmm. we just got a lot the, of money and power the scandals yeah. alone who knew buffalo was so fucked up? i mean oh, issues buffalo. issues in buffalo no, I, I, grew wow. up, I grew up next door you know yeah you know, being well, in toronto buffalo is our, you know our next door neighbor and was there troubles in Buffalo because well, it was always got on issues. fire. It was all, you know, it was like all the eyewitness oh, news. No. It was constantly on fire. That's all they, that's basically all the news reported were fires. Right. Um, um, it was insurance money scams. Yeah, exactly. Arsons. No offense to our Buffalo listeners. I mean, I'm just yeah. saying it's, it's just like. Love a, Buffalo. Been yeah. there multiple times now. Never thought I'd spend so much time in Buffalo, but I got to say. People. <laughs> we've met some of the best people. We we've gone into bars and just been like, "Hey, anybody know anything about the mysterious death of Father Joe Moreno?" And people come out of the woodwork. We have wow. we met the guys, the gay couple that bought the bishop's mansion when he was forced to sell it in order to pay for lawsuits. Mm. Um, yeah, of, of victims. Um, these guys bought the bishops the old it's the it's the most expensive piece of real estate in buffalo um and they purchased uh the old bishop's mansion and told us all kinds of stories about what condition it was in when they got it from the catholic church and like these guys are boozers they had to take like 355 gallon 
trash cans and smash all the bottles, break them just to fit them to get it out. Um, wow. Just wild stuff. They all have lockers in there with their names on it. All of the priests that, uh, you know, are allegedly um, accused of sex crimes. It's just happened to all have a locker up there on like the third floor of this mansion. It's wild. It's a really old place. The the two guys who Jesus. own it now were so kind yeah. to invite Rachel and I to their home and let us like tour the, the mansion and show us. They still have the lockers. The names are still on it. You'll love this. One of the names of one of the priests is Peter Papadick. That's his real name. <laughs> Come on. Really? That's see that's and, really... and it's on the locker, still and, there. Uh, and priests yeah. change their names. They, what, yeah. What, <laughs> you'd think. You'd think this they guy, take yeah. on their or he did. names. Or he, or yeah. he changed or, his yeah, name. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to be Papa Dick. Yeah. I, <laughs> what, that why? Taken? You, know, can you I... know, well, I just consider it fair warning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is that an option? Yeah. Um, Wow. Uh, that's it. I, I mean, Deadly Diocese is really is a good listen. Uh, wrecking, recommending it to uh, to to yeah. our listeners and, and um, give, uh, the dead, deadly seven deadly sins, seven, seven deadly, deadly sinners. sinners. Yeah, sinners. I'm going to give that. A, and so that to Dave's too. question, Greg, do you think you will you guys will tackle the cryptids? I would love, you know, we like post yeah. New Year or whatever. We we want to get out in kind of the field more and and visit places and talk to folks. So we'd love to check out your ranch. And do you? Yeah, we'd you... love to have you. I mean, sure. my wife and I are both kind of in entertainment. She was a comedian, is a comedian. I was I'm a musician. I was in a band for a decade. Yeah. Um, my new band, band that I'm, I've been working on is all cryptids. It's called Tunnel Vision Pipe Dream, and like all the songs are about aliens or yeah. UFOs yeah. or cool. things like that. Um, and would Rachel you describe your have... music as alt rock or metal or? Um, I'm going to assume not Christian rock. Definitely uh, not. Definitely yeah. not. I would. I would say it's like cryptid rock. It's just yeah, really far out I'm there. Like, it's like Pink it. Floyd meets My Morning Jacket yeah. meets yeah, Little right. Taking Back Sunday. Yeah, and, um, and, your, and where did you wife? Where did your wife do comedy? Uh, all over. I mean, she toured for years. When we first met before the pandemic, I was always on tour with her. We were in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. Delaware, doing Philly, stand-up? doing stand up. Yeah, she. Her, for, I'm blanking on her name from Rachel O'Brien. Rachel O'Brien. is her name. Oh. Um, she used to go to the comedy store like every week. Um, she lived for you LAers. Um, on uh pretty much La Cienega and Holloway. Um, okay. And so she just waltzed right up to the comedy store and cool. did, did comedy for a decade. She did USO tours. She toured the world. She toured in uh, Europe, you know, did it all. Yeah. Um, and then the pandemic kind of like just changed our whole life when we moved out of LA, moved to the middle of nowhere. And then we're like, let's go a bit harder on podcasts. And we had got the story from the, the deadly diocese, um tale was told to us through in an email from the uh when they got a second autopsy done by Cyril Wecht, the guy who did mm-hmm. right, Jamade right. Ramsey, yeah. um, JFK, um Brittany Murphy, Anna Nicole Smith. He's Every, like, yeah, if you, no, he's, if you got yeah. a you know celebrity murder on your hands, you get Cyril Wecht. Anyhow, uh the autopsy tech for that second autopsy is the one who reached out to us is like you want to hear about a story that involves a priest who was apparently it was ruled a suicide with two bullet wounds in his head. And he was best friends with uh, Jay Leno. We were like, what? <laughs> so we and apparently digging. shot himself like this, right? Like he didn't exactly. have use of his left. <laughs> it was his the, his the left level. hand um, was wounded in a stabbing uh, four years earlier. And so his left hand was essentially the nerves were damaged. It was more or less paralyzed. He wouldn't have been able to pull the trigger of a 38 um but he was shot he was shot on the left side of his the back you know if you go behind your ear and pull it back about two inches on the left side but he would have had to do it with his right hand since his left hand was paralyzed he's also right hand dominated you know Mm -hmm. and a million suicides that Sarah Wecht had said he'd never people who kill themselves either do it here yeah no one does this or here, Why no would, one goes. Yeah, maybe you might even you have to in, go around like that. Head. And yeah. this particular man was three hundred pounds, very oh, heavy man. set, wide shoulders. Like he, he ergonomically could not put his right hand across 
to where the gun would have had to have entered. Not only that, the the projectile, I mean, it went forward. It, there wasn't a burn mark. Uh, we asked we asked 10 policemen. We even asked the policeman who was on the scene there um, a 38. And we did, we even got, did a ballistics test. Um, if you put a 38 against human skin, like there's going to be a burn mark. If you put a 38 within 10 inches, there's going to be a burn mark and uh, muzzle residue, muzzle flash residue. There was nothing like that. He had to have been shot from at least two feet away. The bull 38 also didn't exit all the more reason. Like if it was pressed against his own head, the bullet would have exited. Um, there's a million incongruencies. Mm-hmm. Uh, w- one of the best is the fact that the gun found at the scene was not his gun. It was turned into police in 1998 to be destroyed. <laughs> so answer oh. that one, Buffalo PD. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm. That's good shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's yeah, good people, stuff. People should tune in. Yeah. yeah. So um, definitely deadly diocese. And then, and so you guys will do your cryptid. What do you think? You're going to do yeah, that's a- the plan. Oh, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. You know, oh, we, we want to get into it on more and more. Yeah. We got a lot to report on around here. We we love doing it. There's, there's all kinds of just crazy stories. Uh, yeah, from, and you said you're not that far, and you're not that far from uh, Skinwalker. And exactly, the whole, you, you into basins pretty pretty lively. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah. hey, we'd love to have you guys out. We could, yeah, do, we'd love to see research. that footage yeah. and all that shit. Absolutely, yeah. sounds really wow. cool. Happily send and it. Beautiful. To you. It sounds fantastic. It's great. You'd love it. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Um, well, let's to be continued, Greg. This was fantastic. Yeah. So much. Yeah, cool thanks stuff so much for coming on. We yeah, really thanks for having it. me. Yeah, it was our pleasure, and um, we'll uh, we're gonna like stay in touch. Let us know if anything else is going on. Um, yeah, we would love yeah. to meet Rachel at some point, and mm-hmm. and uh, maybe we can figure out some sort of visit because this. I mean, we've been really. I mean, I've certainly been really interested in in finding places sort of like Skinwalker, places where things are going on that haven't that are not completely in the sort of bloodstream yet of of this thing. Um, yeah, it would be fascinating. Yeah, I got a whole observation deck. You know, just we just have to plan a good night to look out, break out the telescopes. I'm I'm positive we'll see something. If nothing else, at least a shooting star. I yeah. like it. Yeah, and I like it. It sounds like it'd be well worth it just just for the the natural beauty of the and of the place. And you guys sound like nice people too. So that would be nice. We're all right. We're all right. We're not nice. We're not. Dave is <laughs> terrible to deal with. Yeah. Um, You'll regret impossible. Yes, impossible <laughs> on a trip. Um, cool. All right. Well, thank you, buddy. 